All right, let's talk about the attack surface and attack vectors. Now, attack surface simply refers to all the points at which a malicious threat actor could try to exploit a vulnerability. And of course, the more points there are, the larger the attack surface. Kind of think of a, of a burglar trying to break into a house. The more windows and doors the house has, then the more chances the burglar might have to be able to break in. That's basically what the attack surface is. So the more attack surface, the larger the attack surface, the more opportunities the hacker would have. So the attack surface for an external actor is and should be far smaller than that for an insider threat, obviously. I mean, an insider threat is somebody who's already in the system. They probably already have a username and a password. They have a certain levels of permission. So the attack surface available to such an insider threat should be far larger than that of someone who is external, who doesn't have any sort of password or username or have any sort of access to any kind of file whatsoever. Now, minimizing the attack surface means restricting access so that only a few known endpoints or protocols or ports and services are permitted. So basically, we're trying to close as many doors and windows as possible. Now, the attack vector is the path that a threat actor would use to gain access to a secure system. And there are several of them. You've got direct access, removable media, email, remote and wireless, supply chain, web and social media, and of course, the cloud. Let's take a look at them one by one. Now, direct access. This is a type of physical or local attack, such as exploiting an unlocked workstation or even simply stealing a device. Now, with removable media, the attacker can conceal some malware on a USB drive and then might trick the employees into connecting the media to a PC. In fact, a very, very popular kind of attack here is where the cyber criminals, they'll go to the garage where the employees park their cars and they'll drop a couple of USB drives on the floor, hoping that one of the employees will see it, will pick it up and they will take it back to the office and then plug it into their workstation. We also have email, obviously very, very, very popular. You have attackers sending uh, phishing emails to the employees. And then remote and wireless, the attacker obtains credentials for a remote access or wireless connection. And then alternatively, the attacker could spoof a trusted resource, such as like an access point, and then will use that point to perform credential harvesting and then use the stolen account details to access the network. We have supply chain. So rather than attacking the target directly, the threat actor may try to infiltrate it via other companies in its supply chain. The best example of this would be the attack against Target back in 2012 where the cyber criminals, they actually went through a third party company that was in charge of servicing Target's uh, ventilation systems or refrigeration systems rather. Very, 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 very infamous attack. You should read more about it if you haven't heard of it. And then web and social media malware may be concealed in files attached to posts or presented as downloads. So social media may also be used more subtly to reinforce a social engineering campaign. And of course, the cloud here, the attacker only needs to find one cloud account with weak credentials in order to gain access. And now for the attack vector, sophisticated threat actors will make use of multiple vectors and are likely to plan a multi-stage campaign. So it's not like the threat actor will focus only on maybe like the physical vector or maybe like only the USB uh, vector. They could combine different multiple vectors into a multi-stage campaign. Thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, I will see you in the next class.